Hello and welcome to this Australian Biocommons webinar on K-Base, a knowledge base for systems biology. My name is Melissa Burke and I'm the Australian Biocommons Training and Communications Officer and I'll also be your host for today. In these webinars, we aim to share useful information about the latest digital techniques, data and tools available to the life sciences community. Each month we hear from our local and international peers on a bioinformatics topic that we hope will help Australian researchers get the, uh, do their best environmental, medical and agricultural research. You can keep up to date with the latest Australian Biocommons news and events through the channels listed on your screen. Before we begin today, we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. In my case in Brisbane, this is the Turrbal and Yuggera people. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Today, we're thrilled to welcome Dr. Alicia wood Charlson and Dr. Ellen Dow from the KBase team to this webinar. Alicia is KBase's user engagement lead, and she has a PhD and more than 10 years of experience as a microbial ecologist, focused on host microbe virus interactions in the marine environment. Since leaving the research bench, she has moved into the realm of scientific community engagement with the goal of making microbiome data science more efficient through effective collaboration, building trust in online communities and developing shared ownership throughout the scientific process. Ellen is a science communicator and community manager on the KBase user engagement team. In her role at KBase, she is working to support and develop resources with the community of educators, educators using KBase and their curriculum a molecular biologist by training, Ellen applies her research experience to support scientists and to engage with the K-based community. Welcome to the webinar, Alicia and Ellen, and I will now hand over to you to start the presentation. Thank you, Melissa. Um, again, my name is Ellen Dow, and this is an introduction to K-base or Australian Biocommons. I first want to acknowledge the land that K-Base works on. Um, in the Bay Area, this is the land of the Ohlone people. And to get started for today, um, I will be discussing what K-Base is, especially for those who are new to the platform, um, give a tour, show you how to create a workflow using a live demo, and then demonstrate on how to share your work. I'll then pass it off to Alicia, who will go over publishing with KBase, as well as fair data principles and data management resources. And then we will open up to ad addressing any questions live with the Q&A. So we did take a poll before we got started today asking which data analysis workflows do you use regularly. And from our answers of those who are attending today, we had mostly an assembling and annotating microbial genomes, metagenomic and microbiome community analysis, comparative genomics, including phylogenetic analysis and expression such as RNA-seq and transcriptomics, uh, and a few who are interested in constructing metabolomic um, models. Uh, if you do have any other workflows that you typically use in bioinformatics, please add those into the chat. Um, we're very interested in knowing what our audience is doing here today. And if you are interested beyond this webinar and learning more, we do have some other tutorials which are available on our YouTube page. Um, these, will be, these slides will be shared so you can have access directly to the links for um, all the different topics that um, you all typically use in your research for your workflows. And now I'm going to hop into what KBase is and, um, and how to get started. So if you go to kbase.us, um, KBase, it's, it will welcome you to this homepage. And what is KBase exactly? So KBase is a data science platform that is free and open access. It is built on a graphical user interface, which is very user-friendly. 
and it is a place that integrates data and various bioinformatic tools into one place, which and it also supports collaborative research using these shareable and reproducible notebooks. So if you would like to learn more about what KDAS is about, you can check out, you can check out our about page, meet more of the KBase team. You can also learn about our collaborators and the research going on at KBase through our research page. We also have other pages about, um, such as our learn page, which includes tutorial narratives, as well as a variety of um, links to our other webinars and those that are coming up. And then we have our news page, which shows the latest that's going on at KBase, including community highlights, as well as um, any new feature releases that are happening. We also have a link to our Twitter, so you can follow us at DOE KBase on Twitter or our YouTube channel, which is also um, youtube.com slash DOE KBase. So if you're first joining um, and you have yet to sign up for KBase, um, you would click here on the sign it up button. Um, if you're already registered in KBase as a user, you can click the login. And so how this works is you can log in and this will actually um, use your Google login or your ORCID ID. Um, you can also connect with Globus. So if I click um, on the login, it automatically logs me into the narrative, which I have also already loaded. Um, so what I first see here when I log in is this narratives page. This, um, this is the narrative platform itself. On the left-hand side, I have a menu with narratives, organizations, the catalog, search, jobs, account, and feeds. So when you're first logging in and wanting to link your different accounts, you can go to the account page. And this is where you can link your different accounts, such as Globus, Orchid, um, et cetera. And so what I would like to demonstrate now is how to kick up your first narrative. And so here I have my narratives navigator, and this has all of the narratives that I've created. It also has narratives that have been shared with me, tutorial narratives, and narratives are public. So these tutorial narratives are super helpful. Um, these guide you through different topics, such as that RNA-seq analysis. Um, we also have different tutorials that building a gene tree here. And if I want to create a new narrative, what I do is I go to this create a new narrative button. I click and this is going to spin up a new narrative. And so once my narrative is loaded, um, which you can see here, I have this workflow space, which has welcome to the narrative. This has links to our documentation page, which is docs.kbase.us. So if I click on the quick start documentation guide, that is what takes me here to our documentation page. Um, this quick start guide is a, has a video, which is pretty short, that shows all about um, what I am demonstrating, such as how to sign up for a KBase user account, signing into KBase, and to start goes in to goes into how to create a new narrative. I can also access the docs by going to this help button. And if I click on the narrative user guide, it takes me to that same place, which is super handy. So if I want to delete this app cell, I can delete it and still access that help option. So this is the, um, the workflow space here, which I've just deleted that cell from. And then on the left-hand side under data, this is my data panel. And below that I have an apps panel. So if I wanna add any new data, I can click here on the add data button and a slide out pops out. So I have a few options here for these tabs, including my data, data that's been shared with me, public data, an example and import. So, First, I'd like to demonstrate how to upload a file. Um, currently, I have a um, genome on my desktop. So I'm dragging and dropping that into the narrative. 
So currently this is in the staging area. Once, I get, once it's in the staging area, I can then import it into the narrative. So this is a gem bank file. And I click here on the upload. The other buttons next to it are download and delete in case I want to delete this file from my staging area. This will kick up an import cell. And so this all looks right to me. Um, but I do have other options that I can select within these different parameters. And I'll click Run. Another option I want to show on importing data, um, the panel still hasn't, still does not show that this, um, this genome has been imported into this new narrative. So I can click Add Data again. And what I'll do is I'll go to the public. And um, my background is in marine science. I mostly worked on corals. So I'm interested in some um, different marine bacteria. So I'm going to look up Cavibria coralliticus. Fortunately, I remembered how to spell it. I'll add it to the data panel. And now this is populated within my data section. This, um, this data object is currently in the narrative. Uh, the the Sylvobacter that I still queued um, or started running um, is currently importing. If I wanted to check on the job status outside of the narrative, I can go to the job tab here within the main platform page. And so these are two ways to get the data into the narrative. And if you want to continue on and run some analysis apps, there's a few different ways to check, check out the applications that are available. The first is through, um, first is through the app catalog, which is this button, um, which is in the main menu. Here we have a few different, um, topics of how the apps have been organized. So we have on the top, reprocessing, genome assembly, genome annotation, and it goes down to sequence analysis, comparative genomics. And these can be filtered by using um, the different topics as well as A to Z, and it can also be searched within the app catalog. If you wanna check out the apps externally outside of um, the narrative itself, there is the app catalog, which is all the released applications that are available in the platform. So I can look at, um, I can skip around to different topics within this section, um, including microbial metabolic modeling and different applications that may be more pertinent to microbial communities. I'm going to go back to my current application. So now I have a few other data objects within this narrative. Um, these are the Dyslophobacter genomes that I dragged in. Um, so what I'm going to do is, while you can also filter the different categories of the apps, search them within the app panel, another option is to look at this information um, for each data object. And here I have um, the ability to show different apps with, um, with this data object as an input. I can, also, I can also remove this data object from the data panel. I can rename it if I want to. So if I want to rename it, I can do that here. And what I would like to do is figure out what different apps I can use to analyze this particular um, genome. And so when I click on this, I have a filter put on the apps panel. And from here, I can check, I can look at what different applications are available for k-based genome objects. And what I would like to do today is insert this genome into a species tree. I'm going to move this app down, XL down, so it's below the data object. 
And I can do that by clicking on this button here, move it down. I could also move it back up and I can collapse the cell if I want to as well. So with this, I will choose my Vibrio Corolliticus genome that I've added from the NCBI RepSeq. I am happy with having 20 neighbors in this gene tree. And now I'll name this. So Vibrio Corolliticus. Neighbor tree. And then it will also provide me with a list of the genomes. I'll call this neighbors 20. So that is how you configure the different parameters. There's also an info button that has information about each of the applications. And here I will click run. And this will start um, the app cell. Currently it is in queue. So it is waiting to start the run. While that is running, I did pre-cook an app cell um, with this data. And um, in this case, I used a disulfobacter uh, and ran it very similarly where the configuration is quite the same um, with 20 neighbors, um, have the name there, the job status here shows that it finished when I ran it. And then I also have results. Um, and here's the result of the uh, gene tree with 20 different neighbors. If you're interested in metagenomic analysis, which I did not run today because it takes a long time to import and tends to take longer to run metagenomic um, analysis, I did go through and I found, I. Um, use some data from a, another webinar we have using metagenomes to discover novel microbial lineages, lineages within KBase. And in this case, I took some metag raw metagenomic reads that were um, paired in a paired end library. And in this, in this workflow, it would go through from importing those reads, assessing the read quality, and end pairing. And I am starting at the step four in the workflow of the taxonomic classification of raw, raw reads. There are a few app options to run this. And I chose, in my case, Kaiju to classify the taxonomy of raw metagenomic reads data. And um, in this case, I have the app, I had the app all set up with the reads libraries added. Um, I chose all for the taxonomic level um, and chose the database for it to bounce off of as the rest seek genomes. Uh, again, within each of the app cells, there is this um, info tab, which has all the information, and then it has the information on how the app was run. And finally, I have the result here. Um, and so in this result, I have a few different stacked R plots depending on the resolution of um, the taxonomy. So I have the phylum, class, order, family. And I can also view this report in a separate window. I still see all the information right here. If you're interested in learning about this further, I did attach the, um, once you have access to this narrative, you can check out the webinar narrative as well as watching the webinar that this is from. Um, if you are in the process of analyzing a metagenome and looking to assemble, there are several different applications um, and tools to use um, within KBase, including MegaHit, Metaspades, Hitmer, and IDBA. Another option for analyzing data beyond the apps that are released are apps that are in beta. And so these applications 
you can find either using the app library um, or the app catalog that was back at the um, underneath the catalog tab. So to get here, I can toggle to beta applications. And this will open up all the applications that are within beta. And so the applications that are currently in beta, um, it also denotes as if they are currently in development or if they have released versions as well. And so these applications are either um, tools that are undergoing improvement with Kbase or, or pre-release. It also includes tools from our community developers. Within the um, this narrative itself, I can also toggle from released to beta versions of applications. It'll give me a warning that I'm going into beta. And some new tools that we have coming up are, um, which is very exciting, deal with linking metadata, so environmental metadata with geochemical, with um, bio biological data. So you can use Kbase for biogeochemistry analysis. And these are called samples. So I can search. And if I'm interested in OTUs and amplicon matrices, I can select um, this app. Um, and it will import into the narrative workflow. Um, if I'm further interested in Amplicon, I can change that search for Amplicons and use different apps such as the taxonomy, taxonomy of an bar plot, or um, I can also classify taxonomy with RDP um, or different functions of fabric. So I highly recommend you come to that webinar or sign up because it is in Australia, Australian time. So we do have a sign up um, that you can apply, to, that you can register for, and then get the information later um, for the recording of the webinar. And once I'm happy with how my um, workflow is, and I want to, I want to share it with a colleague, I'll make sure I save the narrative, which is in this button up here, uh, so that everything will stay as I want it to be. And then I can share it by clicking on the share button and going to manage sharing. And so I can share this with um, my colleague Zach if I would like to. Zach and I can give him different privileges such as viewing only, having the ability, ability to edit and save, edit and save and share. I can also make this webinar, make this narrative public. And so this way, anyone can view it um, and access it. The other option is to share it with a team of my collaborators. And this is through the orgs tab. And I have a few organizations that I belong to. So I could select any of these and apply that. To create an org itself, you go to this orgs tab, and from here you can search different organizations. The default opens up to my particular organizations that I belong to, but I can also toggle to all of the organizations that are within Kbase. And I can search them using the search bar on top. If I want to create an organization myself um, for my team of collaborators, I can click the um, create org. And here I will add a display name, a unique ID, which is um, part of the slug for the URL. You can also add a logo, um, the URL to the homepage, select whether it's visible. So if I could search it in that all orgs or hidden and add in different information about this organization. One example I have is the Kbase Educators Org. Um, here you can see the different members as well as the narratives. And here's the about page. This is the information about the near about the organization itself. And the other option within orgs 
and to also request to join. So if you have an organization that you do not belong to, click on um, Enigma here. It'll pop up and I can ask to join this organization and that would send a request. And so um, the other options with narratives, um, in addition to adding the different um, data, adding the data objects, adding the analysis apps and creating these workflows is to add markdown cells, which is what this little paragraph icon down here. And in this markdown cell, I can add information using markdown. And this acts as, um, this itself acts as documentation um, and is also super helpful with publications um, and sharing information. And with that, I will um, stop my share and pass it off to Alicia. Thanks, Ellen. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what to do when you're ready to start publishing your narratives. Um, and including those in publications coming up. So for example, um, I wanted to share my screen. Um, this was a publication that actually came out um, last year that some of you may or might not have seen on the genome catalog of earth microbiomes. This was a collaborative publication uh, between KBase and the Joint Genome Institute. And I'd like to introduce Sean and Dylan that are panelists on this and they're answering their questions uh, while we give this presentation. So feel free to ask questions in there, um, but they were also co-authors on this. Um, so when we got ready to share this um, publication, data from this publication, as you might imagine, a genomic catalog of Earth's microbiomes was quite large. Um, and so one of the things we did related to what Ellen uh, had talked about was we actually created an organization called JGI Mag Database. This is a public organization. You can follow what Ellen did and request to join. And in here, are um, all of the non-redundant high quality mags from this publication and all of the metabolic modeling that goes associated with those. One of the things that is um, really nice about the KBase workflow interface is you can actually convert those narrative workflows, um, which are based sort of on a Jupyter notebook structure um, into what we call a static narrative. And so um, one of the things we did for this, because there are so many different um, high quality mag environments that were there, was we created a single um, narrative that didn't have data in it, but actually was affiliated with the publication and describes all of the mags that were part of this study. This, when it gets turned into a static narrative, then looks like this. So that markdown cell that Ellen showed is where you put in all of this additional information we have links to all of the JGI mags based on environment. Um, and then we have several figures from the publication that show how the mags actually lay out based on the metabolic modeling that was done for each of the mags of each environment. And so this um, static narrative is accessible outside of the login. So it's really nice for uh, when you submit a publication for reviewers to have, be able to access it and not need to create a key-based login. Um, we also work with the Office of Scientific and Technical Information, um, which is the DOE minting office for the Department of Energy Resources. And so each one of these static narratives can get a DOI. That DOI can then go into the data availability statement of your publication and in the reference section. Um, and that's how it sort of links all of these data sets together. Um, if people are interested, uh, we're also working with several publishers to actually create templates for data set publications. One example um, is the microbiology, uh, microbiology resource announcements, which is a publication um, through the American Society for Microbiology. This is considered a data set publication in the sense that one of the things that they um, have in here is an, a genome announcement. So you could take prokaryotic and eukaryotic genomes uh, and you create these fairly short uh, descriptive publications about the genome itself. Um, and you can submit that for publication as a data set publication. We've been working with um, the ASM uh, editors for MRA to actually create a genome announcement template narrative. And this template narrative is something that you can actually go through and fill in the steps that we have for you. So the author checklist is directly from the MRA checklist that it provides to um, submissions. 
and you can go through and run the various apps and it tells you which apps they recommend. And then you can do optional steps such as metabolic modeling if you're curious about that. We're looking for beta testers for this right now. So if you have any genomes um, you're interested in getting uh, data publications for, Zach uh, and I would be more than happy to share this with you. And we would be interested to get any feedback on how user-friendly this is. And what we're actually looking to do is get a timeline from collecting the sample to submitting a uh, data set publication. We're curious to see how short we can actually get that timeline using the tools that Ellen showed you about uploading your genome, doing the assembly on system, annotating it, and then submitting the publication for review. Uh, what that looks like in KBase, this is a published um, MRA um, genome from Larkinella. And they went through, used the markdown to describe a lot of the sample collection, isolation, genome sequencing, et cetera. Um, then they ran their analysis tools. You can see they ran various assemblies. They did some annotation for them. They did a quality check on the genome with check M. They put it into the species tree. And then they built the metabolic modeling and um, flux balance analysis of their genome. And so that this is an accepted publication. Here is the static narrative with the DOI um, that they then associated with the article itself, which is the article that I showed you here. So um, this is definitely something that we're curious to get feedback from the community on um, how fast we can turn around, again, like I said, these, these data set publications so that we can get the information out there early and often. Uh, in addition to that, we're working with MRA to track citation metrics for them. Um, we can actually track all of the provenance in system. So anytime somebody uh, uploads a genome and makes it public, then anyone that then copies that genome and uses that in their analysis, we track the provenance of that. So we know how many times that particular genome or that particular data object has actually been used by the community. And we can feed those um, metrics back into uh, the data set citation and that DOI record. And so part of what we're trying to do in publishing with KBase is actually start to create impact metrics for data sets um, prior to or in addition to any of the publications that you have. So I'd be happy to talk to more people about that if anyone is interested. Um, but I think that's kind of a very exciting way that KBase is trying to support publication. Uh, I'm going to go back to the slide deck because I wanted to talk a little bit about um, data management. And I will put this in present mode. Uh, one of the things I think that's important um, as we start to plan these things out, OK. Uh, okay, one of the things that we're trying to do at KBase in association with several other organizations through the Department of Energy, which I'll introduce you to, is really understanding data management best practices. And so uh, we're trying to support all stages of what we call the data life cycle. So oftentimes people come in with a research question, um, they collect the sample, and in the process of doing that, hopefully collect good, robust sample metadata. Um, then they create the data, they process the data, and then they run analytics um, for those data. Um, so data creation, data processing, and data analytics, these are where a lot of researchers focus, and these are definitely things that KBase wants to support. Um, but these steps here, data preservation, data access, and data reuse, are very important for um, closing the cycle of the data management uh, life cycle. And part of that is because if you want your data to be reused, then you have to make sure that it's available people can access it, and that there is standardized metadata associated with it so people can understand the data that you're working with. And so what all of this does is working towards the FAIR um, data best practices, so supporting findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, and I know that's also an initiative that's been rolled out um, in Australia as well as in the US, and so we're happy to work with any of the Australian collaborators to support that. I do want to highlight um, the Genome Standards Consortium. If you have not heard of them, they do support uh, sample metadata for um, any environmental packages that include soil, sediment, water, and host associated, um, including humans and plants. These are standards for describing the sample metadata that I talked about um, that describes the environment in which you've collected these samples. And so that really helps people understand the context, the latitude and longitude, temperature, salinity, various other parameters that you might have collected alongside your genomic samples. Um, and that actually allows people to put it in some more context. 
Um, again, the new genomic standards in starting is mostly focused on this sample metadata component, but we do recognize that there is obviously preparation metadata, how you process the samples in the lab, and then data processing metadata as well. Um, KBase is definitely um, helping to track the data processing in the sense that we track all the provenance in those Jupyter notebooks um, that we have the narrative interface for, um, that will make sure that all of the settings that you chose and the parameters that you ran um, are actually preserved for the next user. So if you want to know more about that, again, we'd be happy to talk to you about this as well. I also wanted to introduce the National Microbiome Data Collaborative. Um, this is a pilot project that was recently funded by the Department of Energy. Um, they are setting up a uh, discovery portal uh, for people to find data sets related to microbiome data. This is where those sample metadata really comes into play. They have set up a very nice user interface that you can look um, across a map. You can put in various uh, environmental ontology terms, um, and they focus on standardizing both the sample metadata, but then also some of the processing. So right now they're only taking data from the Joint Genome Institute, um, which is a DOE funded user facility. Um, the Environmental Molecular Sciences Lab, again, another DOE funded user facility, but they're also looking into pulling data in from NCBI and EBI directly. What happens when those data go into the uh, NMDC, the standardized sample metadata um, all gets archived and displayed in a nice portal so people can look around and sort of explore what samples they would like to use. Um, and then for metagenomes, metatranscriptomes, metaproteomes, and metabolomes, they're working on standardizing pipelines for data products as well. So not only just raw data are available, but actually standardized processed data. And those data can be downloaded um, and right now and accessible to the community. They're not taking um, environmental data yet from any other sources, um, but we are working on putting together a sample submission site and understanding sort of the needs of the community. So I'd highly recommend looking at that if anyone is interested, um, a way to think about finding different samples and different data that are available. I will show you their website here real quick. Um, this is the data portal for the National Microbiome Data Collaborative. And again, we can provide links for everyone um, that you can see that they've got various different types of omics. So organic matter, metagenome, metatranscriptome, proteomics, and metabolomics. They are working on a nice searchable map structure in order to do that. Um, they have date and time um, as a way to search. And they're looking across multi-omics samples. So, so uh, studies that have actually done several of these different omics types in a particular study in order to start to do cross comparisons um, between those. So that is another resource that's free and open to the community. Again, if you find data in there, you can log in with your ORCID account here um, and actually download those data and, and use them. You could upload them into Kbase if you'd like. Again, this is a pilot project and we hope to eventually connect directly to the NMDC. So there would be potentially an app in KBase where you could find the data that you're looking for and NMDC, enter those ID numbers into a KBase app and directly import those. So we are, we are beta testing and designing that at the moment. So eventually all of these resources will um, start to link together in a way that is a bit more meaningful. Okay, and I think that's um, mostly what we wanted to talk about today, but I think we can open it up for questions. I know that Sean, Dylan have been answering a few in the chat. Are there any, Melissa, do you want to take over? Yes, we can certainly open it up for questions and there have been a couple coming through in the chat. I thought we'd start by just recapping those ones that have come through today and then we had a couple that came through uh, as pre-webinar questions as well. So the, the first question that has come through today is uh, both of them are actually are about different tools and resources that are in KBase. And the first one is, is there a tool to remove eukaryotic contamination from metagenomes without binning? And we do have Sean and Dylan on hand to answer these as well, if you'd like to chime in verbally. Sure, I'll just recapitulate the answer here. Uh, the first option that my colleague Dylan pointed out was the uh, JGI RQC filter app. I think that's available today, if I'm not mistaken, for people to use. That one seems to be dialed in on um, typical model organism contamination, like human, mouse, monkey, um, no, typical eukaryotes. 
Uh, another option is a tool called Gookrep that we have in development right now. And that's sort of a more general um, marker gene approach to uh, removing eukaryotic contamination. Um, and if you're interested in testing that second one and helping us get it launched, that would be great. Please reach out to the Kbase uh, Engage email. Thanks, Sean. The other question that we've had through today is uh, about resources for single cell analysis. And uh, one of the people attending is wondering what is available. Yeah, so um, this is Dylan, hi. Um, so Kbase is, is really built for um, sort of comprehensive analysis after you get uh, sequencing. So, you know, any of the uh, flow sorting or any of the standard things you would do with single cell or um, microfluidics or anything like that, we don't have support for any of that phase of the analysis. Um, but once you have uh, uh, read libraries um, for a single cell, um, and better yet, uh, if you have multiple cells uh, from that same lineage, um, you can do assembly, you can do gene annotation. And once you have that, you can you know, start to compare it against um, the functional uh, complement of related lineages. You can try and see what uh, isolate, um, you know, cultured isolates uh, genomes are similar and do pan genome analysis. We can do metabolic reconstruction. You know, again, you'd want a fairly complete genome uh, for metabolic reconstruction. Um, and uh, you could use it for RNA-seq, again, if it's fairly complete and you have RNA-seq data. Um, so really pretty much just the same stuff you would be able to do for an isolate genome. Um, uh, nothing specific to single cell capabilities. Thanks, Dylan, for that answer. And another question that we've had through is, is there an easy tool to analyze horizontal gene transfer FASTQ files or a pipeline? Um, so not really, uh, it, it's a, a great um, great idea to have something like that. And there's some ideas for how to approach that. You could, you know, so you can do horizontal transfer, gene transfer analysis with, you know, assembled uh, annotated genomes, um, or you could potentially look at, you know, shotgun read libraries. And there's different ideas for um, how one might approach uh, both of those. Um, but we don't have anything explicitly uh, bundled as an app today. Um, you know, what you might do potentially is, is build gene trees and species trees and then do a ratio of the distances in the gene tree and the species tree to tell you whether or not something might be, you know, uh, have been transferred in an ancestor. Um, but there's no existing app um, you would have to piece it together. Thanks, Dylan. We've just had a quest another question come through the Q&A panel. And the question is, does the platform have capacity to take in processed data, ASV tables, that's probably supposed to be CSV tables, count tables or for analysis, or does it need to utilize raw data and process in full within the platform? I think I can uh, attempt to answer this one by ASV tables, are you asking about like OTU tables, like 16S or Amplicon um, types of data? Just want to make, yeah, perfect. Uh, yes, so you're in luck, Patrick. Uh, so we have new tooling that's coming online now uh, to process Amplicon tables specifically. And the input is, uh, are the uh, ASV tables, as you, as you know, the count tables and the um, ASV sequence data that is um, corresponding to that table. Um, so yes, if you have that, you should be ready to plug in to our uh, new Amplicon tools coming online now. Great, thank you. Uh, there is another question as well. It's just moving around on my screen, one moment. So uh, this one is, can you identify keg, keg modules as outputs? Yeah, so um, RAST annotation is, is one of the uh, functional annotation um, tools that we have uh, in Kbase. Um, and that produces the uh, EC classification for enzymes. Um, 
which can be mapped to keg, uh, you know, nodes in the keg maps. Um, we don't currently offer a keg orthology uh, based mapping, um, and it's yet another namespace that uh, there, there are a lot of them out there. Um, uh, but that's that is one that we've considered and might might uh, support at some point in the future. Um, uh, one comment I'll make on that, um, two things actually. So the samples and Amplicon analysis, um, Patrick, hi, good to see you, uh, is on the 13th of October. So that um, those tools that Sean and Mike mentioned um, will be covered in a couple of weeks um, in that particular webinar, exactly. Um, we do prefer actually the, the data tables for that. We don't have a Chime pipeline set up in system that we've looked into that. Obviously Chime works quite well off system. Um, depending upon if you have uh, that dialed in already. So we are focused on the data products from that pipeline um, and then subsequent analysis, that works out great. Um, to the CAD question, we um, one of the things that KBase stands by is it is a open software um, platform. And since CAG has shifted over to um, not necessarily be open software, it is uh, paid down. And so we don't have that functionality directly in the system. Um, but to Dylan's point, you know, the outputs from that we do support. Thanks, Alicia. And one last question is, are there tools and guidelines for network analysis using Cytoscape that can be used at KBIS? Yeah, thanks. That was a question that came in um, during the registration. And so we had thought of that through a little bit. We are starting to pilot um, and prototype Cytoscape tools uh, in system actually. That's based on a, a Rabidopsis network data. And that is in collaboration with Dan Jacobson at Oak Ridge National Lab, who has provided those network connections already. Um, we will be having some uh, visualization uh, of what that looks like in system, probably in a couple of months, people can play around with how Cytoscape would function. There is a little bit of follow-up work to introduce some other model plants into the system. So specifically um, plants that the Joint Genome Institute has in their um, phytosome uh, database. So once that functionality is there, it is possible for other people then to start to think about how you would load your data into a Cytoscape-like environment in KBase. So if you're interested in beta testing what Cytoscape is going to look like in KBase, and or if you want to talk about any network analyses that you might have um, set up for that you need access to Cytoscape uh, using our platform, please send us an email and we'd be happy to chat about it. Great, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell everybody about before we wrap up for today? One thing I wanted to say is um, to reach out and say thank you to our hosts. Um, this is sort of our first inaugural webinar connection. Um, but we've been working behind the scenes with them for a little while. We will have an RDA, a Research Data Alliance Birds of a Feather session, if anyone is interested. Um, I saw Andrew was on here earlier. I think he's maybe still on. He will also be joining that. So we're really trying to drum up some interest in conversation um, on how to span across the ocean so that we can collectively sort of start to answer some of these difficult um, infrastructure challenges together. Um, so we can send out more information about that if anyone is interested. But we're very much looking forward to working more directly with our Australia collaborators moving forward. And we'd love to hear what you think about the platform when you get a chance to look at it. Thanks, Alicia. So as we um, wrap actually, I, oh, sorry, I'd like guys. to add. One, I'd like to add one other thing, um, and that is, uh, you know, what's available in KBase today uh, is not what, you know, it's not the limit. It, the the point of KBase is actually, or one of the points, um, is that it's an extensible platform, and so you know the tooling that's on there. Uh, we have a whole software developers kit, and so anyone who's out there who, you know, is is hoping for some functionality um, uh, and has a, a little bit of programming skill, uh, it, it's now become pretty easy to add new functionality to KBase. So um, please do reach out to us and, and um, if you're interested in adding some tooling to KBase or uh, some functionality that you think should be there, um, we'd be happy to help you do that. So thanks. Thanks, Dylan. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this webinar is part of a regular webinar series that we run at Australian Biocommons. The next webinar will be to launch the brand new Australian Apollo service, which is a collaborative genome annotation tool. 
So come along on the 29th of September to hear about how Australian researchers are beginning to use this and how it might benefit your research as well. Finally, thank you so much again to Ellen, Alicia, Sean and Dylan for joining us today. It's been a great webinar. I've learned a lot about KBase. And thank you to all of you for joining us live as well. Finally, the Australian Biocommons is enabled by NCRIS via BiPlatforms Australia funding. So thanks again for joining us and we hope to see you in another webinar again soon. Bye for now.